Hello and welcome to yet another album review. Today I bring you something a little different. Jane's Addiction with Nothing Shocking. And if there is anything that this album is not, it is not nothing shocking. I mean, just think about it. 1988, you had bands like Motley Crue or Whitesnake at the top of their game with the glam metal sound. And on every radio and then you have this band that they're like no we're not selling out and we're gonna do our own thing and it worked out I mean they had their own sound that really stood out because some people were probably sick and tired of that era that's why the glam metal died down and uh, they, they probably felt like a breath of fresh air listening to to an album like this one and if I had to summarize the album I would have to say it's an experimental alternative rock album elements like hard rock and metal and punk mashed together into one which uh, was shocking and uh, when it comes to the songwriting I would have to say at first I was a little confused I didn't know how to pinpoint the the style you know because there was no clear formula like generally there's like the common formula like verse chorus verse chorus but this album did not follow that and uh, you would have like very long verses and then like a weird different hook but it didn't really feel too catchy to be a chorus and I was like oh everything is all over the place but after listening to it multiple times there was one common denominator in all of the songs and it is repetition I think that one of the ways that they wrote this album was having one main idea whether it was like a bass line or maybe it was a guitar riff something like that and they would grab this main idea and they would they would revolve everything around this main idea and the way I discovered it was like I would just I kind of noticed that it was very repetitive and I would click on a part on a song and I would hear that part and then I would jump to any random part and it was like the same main idea but the way that they kept it interesting was in a few different ways first of all layering they had many layers sometimes like for example one song had just like the main idea was this main bass groove and then later on you had the, the main bass groove but ac uh, accompanied by uh, a guitar that was doing the same groove and the drums that were also like following the groove and of course the vocals on top of it but it was still the same main idea just decorated differently another way was that some of the songs although like the big chunk of the song was the main idea they would have this contrasting part that was a little different and they would like it was like a big chunk then the little part then the big chunk again kind of thing but some other songs didn't even have that contrasting idea such as Jane Says or Summertime Rolls it was like the whole song the same main idea which achieved an effect that I would say was kind of hypnotic like you could close your eyes and and just like lose yourself in songs like the ones mentioned but uh, for example Jane Says is literally a G chord going to an A chord and that's the whole song pretty much but um, I don't know it's still a good song one of the most popular songs and uh, one of my favorites on the album honestly and I don't know how they did it but it's it's just it's simple but but very interesting in, in different ways you know little nuances throughout the song uh, like in the vocals or maybe different lyrics or maybe different ways that he sings it or pronounces a certain word those little nuances though you don't maybe consciously realize they're happening you subconsciously I don't know it keeps you interested in and invested in some ways and another way that they kept the, the songs interesting despite them being so repetitive is sometimes they would add guitar solos which made them stand out not with the glam crowd but with the alternative rock crowd because most alternative rock bands that came afterwards killed the guitar solo so that's something I admire of this album at least and of this band they they kept the guitar solo alive when it was needed they didn't just use it to show off like some of the glam bands did but um and of course the, the groovy bass notes and the groovy 
drums and the, the drum feels kept kept you in, in the edge of your seat even though once again it was pretty repetitive songs and I'm being very repetitive on that idea to drill it in your brain but um, when we go to the vocals themselves they were pretty punk influenced I mean it does sound like he's yelling <laughs> a lot of the time and they're uh, they're very high pitched so I think if he actually wanted he probably would have been able to sing a little bit of glam but which is a little rare to find in alternative rock a very high pitched voice like that you generally have the lower um, register like uh, Kurt Cobain you know and uh, the lyrics were all over the place like sometimes I didn't even understand what they were saying I had to like check what the meaning was on, on Google and uh, the topics were also all over the place. I mean, you, one song is about Ted Bundy, another one is about love, another one is about um, thinking in the shower, you know? So uh, it was so random, but uh, it, it adds to its charm. And uh, the production, there's not much to say. It's a very well produced album, and every instrument he sounds like if you want to focus on the bass you can hear actually the bass like that's props to them because I've said in the past but the bass is usually very forgotten but in this in this album not only were the bass lines very interesting but you could hear it very clearly but uh, overall very clear production I liked it and uh, the vocals sometimes felt really far away because of the echo and delay effects but that was the the desire effect so nothing wrong with that and uh, some of the highlights I would have to say is Jane Says, Ocean Size, Mountain Song, and Summertime Rolls. Oh, and Ted just admitted it's the longest song. Uh, pretty repetitive, but the topic is very interesting. And uh, at some point you even forget that it's repetitive because of the layering. So good songs, good album. And... Uh, I don't know, I enjoyed it. I mean, I'm more into the 80s uh, music like the glam metal and things like that. But I appreciate it for what it was. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, do you think they were influential in the grunge movement? They were influential in killing her metal? How do you feel about that? Tell me anything in the comment section below, okay? I hope you enjoyed it and uh, awake the rebel within.